and remember last class we were talking about how particles with charged particles they interact with the magnetic fields and how this interaction actually generated force like you have this simulation here that is so where is the magnet magnet okay here the magnetic field right and you have the particle here in red and for example if you have only a, um, for example the component of velocity like parallel to the magnetic field do, nothing happens right you just have the particle moving parallel to the magnetic field as you can see here uh, and if you have any component right that is actually perpendicular to this magnetic field so you have the particle is going to actually describe like a helical like trajectory and if you have if this one is is zero let's put this zero so you have like this particle like describing like a, a circular motion uh, okay my point here is actually we know that actually the, the the charge we learned from previous classes right the charge like the, they produce like electric field and also this like you just seen here in front of you that the, the charge is actually interacts with uh, with that field and and actually assuming some some particular motions but what also happens is um, we might expect it also that the discharge also creates a magnetic field as long as this charge is moving and this is what we are going to see today because if you have the charge moving in the electric field and interacting with it like by the generation of some kind of force we have also if this charge the, the, the this was what many scientists in the 16th 17th century I don't remember exactly they thought and this is actually true if you have then this charge moving not in other words if you have current this current is going to generate a magnetic field as well so you have both you have then generating the field and the field interacting with the with the current itself and this is what we are going to to see today because this is what was discovered by two scientists Two scientists called uh, what is my notes? Ch -ch 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 -ch. Notes right here uh, was discovered by these two scientists called Bio and Savar. They discovered actually that there is a relation between like the current like running in a wire and the magnetic field that is generated because of this current. And this is of course this is one empirical law so this was actually found experimentally so I'm not going to prove to you I'm just going to present to you the expression for the Biosover law but it's very easy let's see here one simulation to where is let me close this one no need yeah this one so if we have a you you have the wire here in the in the vertical in the in my screen and what they discover if you increase first of all the the magnetic field that you generate around this wire is actually directly proportional to the current right if you increase the current you can see here that you have one increase in the magnetic field you can see the vector here of course the the vector is always uh, tangent tangential to do to, to the to this point here to to the radial uh, direction and as you can see as you increase the radius you have a decrease in the magnetic field so this you have this uh, relationship to so as a, you increase the 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 distance from from the from the the wire like a where the current is flowing actually you have a decrease and this relation is actually is that the intensity of this magnetic field here is going to be inversely proportional to the square distance to the wire in any given point here around the around the wire and this is what it uh, was found by Bio and, and Sava uh, well 
uh, I don't remember exactly what they did but I think they they after they investigated the interaction between a straight wire right of course and the wire was actually carrying a current and a permanent magnet I th we can actually do this for fun. You can get like a compass and approach to a, as long as the current is constant. This is very important point here. We need like a constant current to, to, to try that. Uh, okay, what they found, guys, experimentally uh, for this kind, and we, we know the direction of this. If you are considering this, infinitesimal element of uh, length here we know that actually we have a field that is around this point here and the direction of this magnetic field in this case is into the page this is given by the right hand rule let's uh, let's not forget that let's put here what is that color 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 let's in red right right hand rule and what they found out is that da -da -da -da. their law states that this the field here is going to be described by this expression here so this is me uh, mu zero times i and this is over four pi And here you have something again that you have to be careful when you're solving the problems. This is going to be again the vector pro, uh, product between this infinitesimal length here, right? Time uh, the vector product between the infinitesimal length and the unit vo uh, vector in the direction that you are interested in actually calculating and this is also divided as I, I showed you in that uh, nice simulation there over the square of the distance from this element here to the point that you are interested okay this is uh, and this is infinitesimal and if you want to know oh, and if you want to know uh, the the contributions for every single infinitesimal components here all you have to do is integrate we are already familiar with that so this is going to give us one expression like this you, you can put everything that is constant outside so this is going to be uh, mu zero i over four pi And then you have to uh, integrate to actually to account for our, all contributions from the wire. Well, we can call let's use here term. Let's copy this. So no need to write again. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah first of all right if uh, since this is a vector product right so you are interested in the sign here actually this you, you you can write this vector product here as the product between the magnitude of this infinitesimal length times the magnitude uh, times the the angle between this direction right so 
what you are interested in here is actually you can rewrite this one so this is going to be the same to be dl times sine sine uh, sine theta and this divided by this the square of the distance Uh, okay ve very important thing to to notice here guys okay this is a vector in integral right so you are actually trying to solve this one and since this is a vector remember not all contributions are going to be in the same direction not necessarily in the same direction sometimes you are going to to have contributions in different directions so as you remember this is probably some it's not so easy to to solve <laughs> this is going to give you uh, sometimes it's going to be a little bit challenging to solve that ah, and just to remember you guys also uh, this constant here this is this constant uh, mu zero or mi zero I don't know this uh, so this is going this is actually very known what the hell this is uh, 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 uh, Tesla meter for ampere okay this is also important for the calculations itself and this is called the permeability of free space nice all right let's put here i'm going to i have some extended like lecture notes so you don't you guys don't, don't need to take a note have it uh, one extended version of this so you can actually see and what you're interested here is how to solve problems right you have some basic strategy uh, to solve this kind of problems the first thing that i have to do is actually well, if you have to use like Biosarva method, uh, the first thing that I have to do is actually check about the symmetry. If you have symmetry in your problem, any kind of symmetry, if you have cylindrical symmetry, if you have spherical symmetry, all those symmetries that we learned before, any any of those um, symmetries that we learned before, right? You have like a planar like cylindrical and spherical symmetries then it's better to use Ampere's law that you are going to learn like a, a li later you still don't know if you don't have if you don't have any kind of symmetry then we use Biosarva law it's going to be challenging but it's doable so we don't have to worry okay so let's let's learn the strategy to solve actually doing some some problem and for that I'm going to choose this problem here I'm consider uh, an infinite wire with a current I flowing in my drawing here from left to right and I'm interested in calculating the magnetic field in a point B uh, sorry in a point P here that is distant a distance like a big r from this point 
so this is what I'm going to do we okay we're going to use Bios um, of law to calculate uh, the magnetic field so let's let's go let's put some lines here so you can do it uh, let's make some geometrical considerations first here we can we can see this triangle we can actually write from this triangle here using like Pythagoras uh, relationship we can actually say that this this is small r here is going to be r squared is going to be equals to big r squared plus this x squared we can also write these vectors here like I'm, I'm writing I'm considering this vector here it can be this color let's put in red and this vector here is going to be X, I'm calling X in the Y direction plus Y in the J hat direction. And in our, our case here, we are using uh, not Y, but we are using this uh, notation here. We are calling in this uh, direction, we are calling R. So this is going to be big R J hat. Okay, I think it's fine. Uh, the magnitude of this vector here. Let's go back to black. The magnitude of this vector is going to be the square root of this component is squared. And the unit, uh, the unit vector in that direction, we just have to divide this vector, right? R is divided by uh, its magnitude, and then we have actually we can actually copy this. Let's copy so I don't have to rewrite everything. This is going to be. this divide by this and probably this we are going to use in the Biosarva law to calculate the, the field okay let's keep this here let's make this a little bit smaller put this a little bit to this side okay let's remember this is just geometry right some very basic you know geometric uh, considerations about this problem and okay first of first of all let's try to write this uh, infinitesimal length here you are interested in actually this infinitesimal length and in our case since I'm considering in this drawing here I'm considering the horizontal uh, axis right is along the wire so i have that this length here is going to be if you want to write this as a vector this is going to be this dx and the dx is also in the y uh, direction in general i put colors for those guys i put like this as you remember now let's let's keep the colors out we have no time This is going to be I. Dun, da, da, da. But in general, I like the colors and 
so to make it, uh, it makes easier to identify the products and everything Let's put the colors, guys. Let's keep the colors. Okay. And we we can see that actually this vector product between this infinitesimal uh, length here and our vector R unit so this is going to be we have the expressions here right guys you can use you can substitute these guys here up uh, one and uh, this is two you can substitute substituting this here This is my mnemonic here. So we are going to have this. Cross product or vector product with this. Here. And remember, we have here the mnemonic right here. So, I uh, vector product, I had cross product with I, I hat is going to be zero. Parallel vectors are going to be zero. And you have only I vector, I hat vector product with J hat. And this is going to be K hat. That means that we have from this vector product here we have only one component in the in the k hat direction right that is going to be actually only this component here so we are going to have r over these guys here Let me put a little bit here. Okay. So I have this, and this is going to be in the K direction. K hat. This is expected, right? Because if you use the right hand rule here, right? If you put the fingers here. And the thumb in the direction here we know that the, actually the vector here the would be something like this right at this point and this side of the wire would be something like this oh my god my drawing is terrible but definitely uh, so this is actually correct or this is Okay, so this is definitely, this is definitely correct. So this is the proper direction. Okay, what do we have to do now? We have to substitute this in the Biosarvar law and try to solve this integral. Let's see what we are going to have. We know, uh, so the magnetic field is going to be mu zero i r divided by four pi the integral oh my god that's a very early integral integral from zero to infinity uh, 
all of these guys do uh, here you're going to have r e squared plus x squared n plus these guys here no plus this denominator here Okay, keep keeping. Wait a second. Some guys are still joining us. Okay, keep solving this integral here. This k hat. Let's not forget the direction. Uh, well, we can solve this. This is going. This kind of. You are very familiar with this integral already, right? You have solved uh, many times this before, but this is very similar. So what you are going to have here is actually something like this. here x and this from 0 to infinity and this in the k direction k hat direction dun, dun. And then this final is going to give me the very famous expression for the, the magnetic field around a wire. So this is going to be equals to me zero i divided divided by 2, 2 pi r, 2 pi r, and this in the, again, in the k hat direction. Let's put here. Okay, so we have this expression here for the magnetic field. And we already know how to, let's put, okay. Let's see some important parts, guys. Some experimental results for some, some simulation. Uh, this I showed to you. We, we remember, right, how to, let me share my, my screen with you. 
So you have magnetic field, something like this in our case, right? We have uh, in our case or something like this. Yeah. Let's look from the top. Our point P would be here on the left side. So you have um, like piercing out of the screen, right? The, the, the field, but we already know how to, how to do that, right? Guys, you can use the right hand rule, but mathematically we can find the same thing, right? You, if you use here, if you, uh, using the right hand rule, you can actually see that at this point P here, actually at this point here, we have something like this, right? as I mentioned before. And here is some, some picture we have from the textbook. This is a courtesy, I don't remember for which museum. You can actually see that this is a wire with a current flowing through it. And you can see that actually you have like a bunch of concentric like circles. So the, those are some kind of metallic material spread. You can see that you have like perfect, like a concentric circles around that, um, around the wire. Okay, with this being said, let's move to another very good application. This was actually the, the problem for, for one wire. I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is solve the problem for two 